All right. Hello again. I guess we're good to go. Um, so my name is Renat. This webinar is brought to you by Provectus, an AWS Premier Consulting Partner. If you note before we begin, as we move through the content, you are very welcome to post your questions in the GoToWebinar chat tab on your right. So, and we will address them during question answering session at the end. And we'll also provide you with a webinar recording and all the useful links shortly after the session. So with this being said, let's continue. Uh, our objectives today is just uh, learn how to build scalable and secure machine learning infrastructure on AWS and how projectors can help you along this journey. Uh, We'll share best practices of how Amazon SageMaker can be combined with open source tools for both experience and uh, productivity. And finally, we'd like you to take something home after this webinar and offer a collaboration, a follow-up session to deep dive into your current machine learning infrastructure and provide you with actionable recommendations from uh, Provectus machine learning experts. <clears throat> Here's a brief, brief overview of what this session includes. We'll start with a short introductions of our company, uh, speakers and panelists of this webinar. We'll talk about motivation for establishing proper machine learning infrastructure where we present a real life example, a case study that demonstrates benefit of such infrastructure designed and built on top of AWS. When we talk about core concepts that are used throughout this the webinar, after that, we will give a high level overview of SageMaker and its place in AWS machine learning stack and show a live demo of machine learning pipelines based on SageMaker. The next big section explains how SageMaker can be combined with popular open source libraries on different stages of typical machine learning life cycle. After that, we will show a different live demo that solves the same task as the first one, uh, reuse many components, but replace some parts with open source alternatives. And we will conclude this session with key takeaways and action items for participation in the Provector's acceleration program. Uh, yeah, now I'm passing on to Matt for a quick company introduction. Matt, the stage is yours. Yeah, thanks, Renat. Uh, just to give you guys a quick overview on Provectus, we are an 11-year-old consulting firm uh, based out of the Bay Area in California. I uh, have about 500 employees and offices uh, globally all over, the, all over the world. A couple of core competencies uh, worth mentioning uh, that we have lie in DevOps, uh, migrations, data analytics and machine learning. And also worth pointing out that we absolutely see kind of a convergence between these competencies when it comes to providing expertise for, for anything AIF and ML related. Uh, the three things that we'll, we'll quickly mention here that kind of make us different from other consulting or, or, or partners out there. Uh, first, we focus not only on the technology aspects and best practices, uh, including open source, but also business objectives and, and that long-term strategy. Uh, second, we are recognized as an AWS premier consulting partner specializing in AIML uh, due to our ability to solve the, the toughest business and, and technology challenges for our customers in, the, uh, in AI, AIML. And then third, unlike other professional services companies, uh, we're an active contributor into open source machine learning and data infrastructure projects. And this is really what supports our thought leadership in this field and allows us to bring the latest and greatest innovations to our clients faster. So with that being said, I'm gonna pass it back to you, Renat. Thank you, Matt. So let's go forward. Uh, yeah, let me introduce ourselves. Uh, yeah, so this is me. I'm, I'm Renat. I am a senior solution architect in the Provectus company with focus on machine learning projects. 
and our panelists today who are happy to uh, answer your questions in the chat and uh, help me with that. One of them is Dmitry, who is senior solution architect, and uh, Linar, who is uh, one of our senior machine learning engineers. Uh, all right, so we introduced yourself. So now, um, can you tell us a bit about yourself, please? So we can see who is who in the room. Let me start the poll. So please tell us what's your current role in your company. So we'll be able to speak your language. I will wait for a minute. So yeah, it seems like uh, more than a half are like technical folks and architects. So we can uh, dive deeper about technical part. Okay, so let me hide the poll and continue the presentation. All, all right, so we'd like to start by answering uh, the why question uh, to talk about motivation. Uh, let's visualize the final outcome and benefits of having uh, a machine learning infrastructure and then work backwards discussing what are the options needed to achieve that goal. We will use a real world case study to explain uh, this why aspect. So um, his brief introduction, uh, Gochi Kids is an amazing company that helps millions of kids to prevent vision impairments. Projectors and Gochi Kids have been working on the problem of reducing manual overhead during child vision screening. Uh, the team of ophthalmologists had to review more than uh, 50,000 images per month, which was costly and inefficient in the long run. Inaccurate image processing also caused readmissions, which not only added up to 20% of overhead cost, but also negatively impacted customer satisfactions with the GoCheck Kids application. With this in mind, the primary goal of the Coach Kids team was to improve the accuracy of applications the application's automated image analysis to match that with manual review. As you can imagine, security and compliance is the first priority for these types of projects for obvious reasons. So Proyectus has framed uh, ML problem as an end-to-end -end image classification to detect child gaze, strabismus, crescents, and other symptoms of like possible pathologies. During the project, we have conducted about uh, 100 experiments on the entire data set, which was quite big and uh, consisted of like uh, 100,000 images. Each experiment usually have many trials and can take from like 50 minutes to six hours on a single GPU. By experiment, we mean tracked end-to-end -end experiment on a cluster. We're not counting like uh, intermediate development runs uh, that used for debugging and experiments in notebook instances. Uh, while running a single experiment, it was really important to move forward and configure and run experiment for the next uh, hypothesis to test it. Data preprocessing might took about five hours, so we had to version output data set and reuse them in upstream pipelines. Security-wise, we had to minimize an access to the real data, even for machine learning engineers. Most of the full-scale experiments were run in a blind mode, meaning when a machine learning engineer works with metrics, reports, and logs without touching actual raw images. This is the summary and KPIs. We have improved recall of original computer vision-based image processing algorithm by 3x. One of the greatest achievements is the fact that machine learning engineers were focused on modeling and experimentation rather than fighting with infrastructure or data preparation. By the way, the final model in this case has been optimized for, for iPhone and deployed at the Edge device. 
the main message here, this could not be possible without proper machine learning foundation. This is exactly why companies of all sizes need to invest into machine learning foundation in order to accelerate um, AI adoption. So with this being said, we're curious to know like what's the current state of your uh, machine learning infrastructure. Let me start the poll. Okay, so as usual, I'll give it a minute. So please, Choose one that describes your case. Okay, I'm closing the poll and showing results. Yeah, so almost half of audience already adopting different cloud vendors. To implement machine learning workloads. Okay, so let's me continue sharing. Okay, let's now talk about constituents of this machine learning foundation that we mentioned before. Let's start with a typical machine learning workflow. Uh, here's a simplified overview of ML lifecycle that you all perfectly know. It has data preparation stage uh, that contains like activities like data ingestion, cleansing, merging, labeling that produces a version data set that is ready to use by machine learning engineers. Uh, and during that phase, you do feature engineering, try differing modeling hypothesis, iterate on them, optimize hyperparameters, and eventually select a model candidate. Um, yeah, you pick up the best model that can be promoted to operations. Uh, then in the, last, uh, in the last phase, uh, a lot of struggle can happen if it was not planned in advance. For example, data preprocessing used for training might be difficult to reproduce for production inference, or deploying the model requires some changes in its code that might impact previous experiments results. Uh, maybe some assumptions about input data uh, will be broken once model is productionized. Uh, the foundation to avoid such cases and make this cycle reproducible is automated machine learning pipelines. Let's, uh, let's jump right, right into the core concept of reproducible machine learning pipelines. So you have four inputs, the code of machine learning model, the code that described machine learning pipeline steps, and the code that described your infrastructure and dependencies for that. Obviously, any code is to be stored and versioned in Git. You also have a fixed, immutable, and version data set as an input for your uh, pipeline. Ideally, a data set is generated from centralized feature store. You can think about machine learning orchestrate as a meta compiler that takes all these four inputs and compiles it into the model. As any compiler, it outputs logs, metrics, and alerts, as well as tons of metadata to be stored and analyzed. That's it, uh, very simple. The beauty of this is the fact that it fits into continuous delivery workflow, as well as into experimentation flow. You can trigger the same pipeline manually to run experiment, and the very same pipeline is aut automatically triggered from GitHub, or like CI, CD tools for continuous integration and deployment. Yeah, and one of the options to implement this infrastructure is Amazon SageMaker, uh, which is fully managed service inside AWS. Let's start with describing how SageMaker fits into AWS. You can see, on this slide, three groups of services here, and they differ from each other on the amount of coding and other efforts required to solve the machine learning problem. So at the top layer, uh, you can see like a bunch of fully managed uh, services uh, for different machine learning problems like Amazon recognition, 
uh, like Amazon Poly Lex, so to, that works with like different kinds of data for like images, natural language, text, speech, uh, like for forecasting, uh, recommendation engines, and and so on. We are ready to use. So and so we allow developers to easily add intelligence to any application, like without needing machine learning skills and writing machine learning code. The only thing that you need for these services is data. So and when the pre-trained models provide ready-made intelligence for applications and workflows to help you do things uh, like personalize the customer experience, forecast business metrics, translate conversions. A conversation, extract meaning from documents and more. At the middle layer, there is an Amazon SageMaker, which is in the focus of this webinar. It provides every developer and data scientist the ability to build, train, and deploy machine learning models at scale. So it removes the complexity from each step of a machine learning workflow, so you can more easily deploy your machine learning use cases, anything from predictive maintenance to computer vision and predicting customer behaviors. At the bottom layer, expert practitioners are given most of the flexibility and, and can develop on the framework of their choice as a managed experience in Amazon SageMaker or use the AWS deep learning uh, machine images, which are fully configured with the latest versions of the most popular deep learning frameworks and tools. Okay, let's zoom into SageMaker now. SageMaker is a full, fully managed service that provides a set of tools that together can cover almost all steps of the machine learning life cycle that we presented before. You can use tools in, conjunct in conjunction with each other, or you can pick only those that you miss in your infrastructure. So due to time limitations of this webinar, we can cover everything that SageMakers uh, that SageMaker includes today. Instead, we will focus on the core components, describe general underlying principles, and how you can combine, supplement, or even replace them with open source libraries. So here in, in data preparation section, we'll cover today processing jobs and feature store. From the build and train sections, we'll talk briefly about SageMaker Studio, training jobs, built-in model registry, and how you can bring your own algorithms and models to use SageMaker capabilities. From the deployment section, we'll touch SageMaker models uh, serving Kubeflow integration, model monitor, and relatively new thing, SageMaker pipelines. And we'll show a live demo with almost all of this. Okay, let's see uh, what SageMaker has for like typical uh, training pipeline. So uh, there are three types of jobs. Uh, processing jobs, uh, which you usually use for data preparation. So where like contract is quite simple on, on high level, they uh, get data set and produce data set as an output. Then we have training jobs so we uh, get data set and as an output we produce like model artifacts and metrics and later but not not this is not required you can rope these artifacts and the serving code into what's called like SageMaker model SageMaker has built-in model registry yeah and uh the last thing that is shown here is hyperparameter tuning job. So it allows you uh, automate search for optimal hyperparameter values. So um, it supports several strategies like Bayesian optimization or like random search. And it will spawn like bunch of the, like rounds of training jobs uh, like with like this hyperparameter value uh, guesses. Okay, so once you have a uh, trained model, you can use it uh, either to, to run like real-time endpoint for real-time predictions, meaning you, you can, if your consumers want to send like HTTP request with input data and as a response receive 
uh, responses uh, with predictions in body. So uh, remember this SageMaker model that was shown in the previous slide. So you can use it to almost with one click uh, to uh, to deploy real time endpoint for it. And SageMaker brings several benefits around that. So inside of these endpoints, uh, out of the box, there will be like load load balancing and after auto scaling capabilities. Yeah, and another option, uh, if you want to schedule some like applying model for offline data set, say like to uh, you collect data uh, and on daily basis, you want to apply that model for all new records. So you can uh, schedule like SageMaker batch transform jobs. So, and here's the brief, brief description of what happens inside. So inside a uh, batch transform job, uh, SageMaker actually uh, launches like these real time endpoints that's shown on the left, but where he will launch, launch them and then sh uh, shut down after work is complete. And also like uh, you can configure how SageMaker should split data uh, on, on batches to distribute them among different in instances, and then and uh, how it should combine uh, output data. Yeah, we briefly touched several types of SageMaker jobs, and you've seen uh, on the slide these arrows connecting them. But the question is, who actually managed that flow? who connects one job with another. One of the options here, uh, like recently released uh, SageMaker pipelines. Uh, it is a uh, built-in pipeline orchestrator. Uh, so it allows you to automate these machine learning workflows. It, uh, you, you provide pipeline definition, which is like, directed a cycle graph of different Amazon SageMaker jobs and other actions. Uh, you can pass uh, data from like one node in this graph, meaning from one job to another. Uh, SageMaker pipelines support like parallel and conditional step executions. And you can, uh, yeah, and you can parameterize this uh, pipeline. So you can define it once and execute many times for like, for different purposes. For example, during development, you can try different hyperparameter values or different hyperparameter value ranges, or and then uh, you can push one such pipeline into production uh, with like predefined uh, parameters. Uh, yeah, so it is completely serverless solution and, and fully managed. So you don't have to deploy anything uh to run these pipelines and also out of the box SageMaker pipelines uh, supports like automatic lineage tracking uh, meaning like for each uh, artifact like data set uh, model docker image uh, endpoint and also all activities that connects them uh, it, it will create these lineage records. So it will allow you to query this lineage. So if you want to know well, what what's the likes, what was the source data for currently running endpoint, you can use that information. So, and this requires like no code to push that um, tracking. And SageMaker Weblines also supports caching. So this is also quite useful during like development and debugging uh, pipelines, meaning that you don't have to wait uh, if like one of the last pipeline steps failed, you don't have to wait uh, for, for the ones in the beginning because these uh, step executions can be, and the results can be reused. Okay, so, and one of the also recent additions to SageMaker components is the feature store. Uh, so feature store needs some investment, but brings a lot of benefits. Let's mention a few. Uh, feature, feature definitions are, are standardized, features are easily discoverable and ready for use. It means that machine learning engineers in your company working uh, for different 
machine learning tasks to not have to implement the same feature from scratch without know, knowing that it was already implemented by someone before. And another benefit, in your pipelines, you don't have to repeat feature extraction step every time. Usually the same data generates the features, but here we do it exactly once if we use feature store. So yeah, uh, SageMaker feature store supports two types of features online and offline. Uh, online features are used to make real-time predictions and are stored in high throughput, low latency store. Offline features are used to, for batch processes like training and are stored in high throughput, high bandwidth store. Okay, so now let's move to the live demo. Uh, before we uh, I start sharing it, let me briefly describe what's going on there, just some prerequisites. So machine learning task that is uh, that we try to solve there is like predicting airline flight delays. And as a source data for that, we use open data sets from the United States Bureau of Transportation Statistics. And we use like data set version that was like pre-aggregated uh, before on a, on, on a Kaggle, uh, like as a Kaggle data set. So let me now show you uh, how this pipeline looks in SageMaker. So yeah, yeah, I will open like SageMaker Studio Let me check, is it visible? Uh, I'm gonna go to webinar, yeah, I can see. Okay, so uh, this is SageMaker Studio and it's it provides you some nice visualization of uh, SageMaker pipelines. So here, uh, let me uh, open uh, the training pipeline for that and its graph, it looks like this. Uh, so as a parameters, you can see like obviously some uh, input data location and some hyperparameters like uh, max step or XGBoost boost classifier. Yeah, and let's uh, try to look at some execution, one of the successful. Uh, yeah, for example, this one here. So yeah, let me briefly describe what's going on here. So yeah, first step, uh, called parse, just uh, parse raw input data and uh, like enforce some types. Yeah, then there's like sp uh, splitting step. I guess uh, most of you uh, understand what's going on here. So after that, we, uh, yeah, we uh, extract labels. So like, like our target variables for, for classifier, we feed feature extractors. Uh, we then use these trained feature extractors to actually extract features for, for like for each record in data set. And we do it like, well, there are two, you can see there are two branches, one that do um, uh, like does this for train data set and our for validation and all of that eventually goes to training job it's this this step yeah and uh the last step here we we package uh results of training job as a like sage maker model and for this we use like built-in um uh, step type it's called like create model step uh, so it just takes like outputs of training job of a previous training job, yeah, and create model. Uh, yeah, so let's um, zoom into, for example, into uh, like training step here. So you can you can see like uh, two inputs here, two data channels for that. One is for like training data, another for validation, and also we can see we used a docker a, like underlying docker image for that. So in this case, we use uh, doc uh, XGBoost implementation provided by SageMaker, but this is not necessary, and we will cover that back later. Uh, yeah, and as an output, we can check different metrics produced during training job. 
and also uh, model artifacts that Sure, and we also can uh, check briefly, we can, uh, that this pipeline execution created uh, like SageMaker processing jobs. You can see them in corresponding tabs of SageMaker UI and training. Yeah, but the, the more important part that uh, result of this pipeline should be Packaged uh, SageMaker model. You can check it here. Yeah, so there's like some like weird names, but we can using met metadata in API, we can figure out that uh, this is actually this model here. Yeah, and so, uh, and we can use that model to uh, like create endpoint or create batch transform job uh, using like uh, SageMaker API. Right. Yeah, so, and there is also like uh, another pipeline that we call inference pipeline. So uh, it's like kind of uh, implement, it provides like batch mode inference. So imagine if you want to like, Execute it daily, so it very short. It re, it reuses uh, components from uh, from training pipeline, so we don't have like any discrepancies between like training and serving code. So we use the same featureizing component, and we uh, run SageMaker batch transform job uh, using uh, the same model model produced by training pipeline so you can check that here yeah so this is like model artifacts produced and this is uh, uh serving code uh, docker image used for that So, and it, you can also um, ch about automatic lineage tracking. You can go and check that for each pipeline execution, SageMaker automatically without uh, like any uh, code, additional code, it can create, it creates what is called like experiments here. So, and individual run, pipeline run, represented by a trial so we can go here and see like trial components for different steps of pipeline so what's more interesting here about training because it provides more metrics we can open it here we can see some um, <clears throat> uh, metrics aggregated during uh, the job execution uh, check final metrics here yeah and and other lineage components All right, so I guess this is enough for SageMaker demo. So let's continue this presentation. Let me return and check that it's uh, go to webinar actually shows the right thing. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. This was our first live demo. Let's move forward. The next section should demystify like a quite common misunderstanding that SageMaker enforces you to work inside its boundaries once you start to use it. Uh, and we will conclude it with a live demo that solves the same task uh, about like using the same data and reuses the same components with no changes in their code and no dependencies on like SageMaker specific. Uh, uh, like uh, packages. Okay, so uh, let's start with uh, data preparation. Uh, so uh, please, like, uh, simplify a description. How what's happening behind the scene when SageMaker processing job uh, starts execution? SageMaker provisions like ephemeral, temporal cluster of like EC2 instances. Uh, and for each of them, it pulls a Docker image 
with a uh, processing code. Uh, then it automatically copies like input data from uh, Amazon S3 buckets and, and mount it into like container file system uh, according to configuration of this processing job. When it runs like an entry point uh, in the container and after it com completes its execution, uh, SageMaker automatically copies uh, like output data from the container into back to S3. So uh, I put here like asterisk uh, talk, talking about the data. There's like some just note that this is not actually, this is optional uh, for like, you can avoid copying data. You can uh, say SageMaker that uh, like dealing with data managed by application inside containers. So this might be useful if you deal with a large data set, or for example, if you use uh, like uh, a patch spark uh, and uh, like which has like different uh, access patterns. So uh, what's important here that uh, what I just described is completely agnostic to uh, a framework used inside processing code. So inside this Docker image, you can use a framework of your choice. So it can be just a few examples here. It can be popular like Pandas choice for small data set. It can be uh, like Dask, uh, uh, like if you want to run like distributed computation. Remember that processing job uh, like support, so like running on, on like cluster of instances. Yeah, you can uh, also use uh, like open source Apache Spark and SageMaker provides you like a pre-built container that can run like Spark workloads as a SageMaker processing jobs. Okay, so uh, uh, with this being said, let's move forward. So just a, like a uh, short overview that usually in your machine learning pipelines, it's good to think ahead about like data testing. So there should be a place for data quality assurance. Like and the main point here that uh, state of art computing algorithms uh, like compete for accuracy improvements of like fraction of percentage, uh, like depending on the task. But usually data cleansing contributes much more into the final quality of the solution. So uh, it can call it, uh, re one might be several reasons for that. For example, like small uh, initially unnoticed errors made on early stages, like data ingestion, uh, data processing, may lead to like significant degradation of model performance once you productionize your pre-processing and model. And uh, this means that you need to introduce some like data validation and checks. Uh, this might include like relatively simple checks like duplicate detection, missing values, format errors, like in different types of integrity. And uh, it might be more advanced uh, checks like data distribution, dealing with outliers, detecting anomalies. So, and uh, tool-wise, not many options. For example, VQ is a library for Apache Spark that allows you to profile data set and enforce your own constraint system. And we will mention it again soon when we talk about model monitoring. So, uh, and gr great expectations is our preferred choice in terms of maturity, developer experience, and community support. Uh, and Provectus, our company recently contributed like an open source component that allows you to use great expectations uh, like test suits in Kubeflow pipelines. Uh, yeah, so let's move forward. So once we are good with data, we usually start working on modeling. And usually this phase includes several activities like choosing algorithms appropriate for your task, uh, like one that you're going to start with uh, as a baseline, then improving them more often like using existing implementation, adapting it for your task data and environment. So this means like running a lot of experiments, comparing them and analyzing results. And SageMaker Studio allows you to get started with this part quickly. So 
SageMaker Studio is like fully integrated development environment for um, machine learning practitioners and data scientists. Uh, it supports out of the box like authentication. Guys, sorry, you you have had yeah, you should mute yourself. Um, yeah, so out of Bluebox, it, it supports um, like authentication and like sh sharing, uh, like of results and notebook instances. Uh, it integrates well with our uh, SageMaker components, like experiments, debugger pipelines, endpoints, and. Uh, these integrations, which is also quite common misunderstanding, uh, are not exclusive and uh, and they're based on SageMaker API. It might give you a false impression that many SageMaker features can be used only inside Studio, but uh, this is not true. And it's, it's SageMaker Studio, in this case, it's just actually like built in default front end for available SageMaker API, but you, like you are free to use this SageMaker capabilities like outside SageMaker Studio in most of the cases. Uh, yeah, other like useful things here that you can uh, uh, manage like different compute instances for different kernels inside single user interface, uh, single studio instance, and it also like uh, provides you like shared file system between kernel. So for example, you can introduce one kernel for like data processing that might be not not this fat and maybe another kernel that uses instance with gpu for for training and all and manage everything from a single uh studio instance and uh under the hood it's based on open source like uh popular uh jupyter lab uh framework so it means that's like by default, SageMaker uh, provides you some built-in kernels for frequent use cases, like uh, pre-built with popular um, libraries for data scientists and machine learning uh, practitioners. But you are free to bring your own like Jupyter kernel or, or, or image and use it inside. So if you want to like automate that part, uh, just to avoid doing like Keep install and things like that. You can pre-build your own kernel and use it like across your organization. Okay, so let's talk about model training now. So uh, how StageMaker training job works uh, behind the scene. So you can see like like similarities for processing job and uh, yeah. Almost the same things uh, happen here. Uh, some differences here, for example, that contract with uh, for training job, uh, it will inject into container like uh, JSON file with hyperparameters, and this is uh, motivated by the fact that training jobs can be used inside hyperparameter tuner so there's like it should be it's just part of the api so hyperparameter tuner uh, treat these hyperparameters differently uh, than uh, some other configuration options yeah and also uh, out of the box it collect metrics um uh yeah, you can uh, use that capability so and everything else is quite similar to processing job. And again, uh, what is depicted here, uh, it's completely like implementation agnostic. Uh, so you can use a uh, framework of your choice again. So TensorFlow, PyTorch, uh, even like uh, some R models there. This is totally uh, fine. Uh, and also uh, SageMaker, uh, Again, so we're talking here about a cluster of instances, so you can implement like distributed training, knowing how uh, SageMaker like notify different instances. 
and there are like pre-built containers for distributed tr uh, training like for, for TensorFlow, for example, or uh, SparkML. But you, you are free to uh, bring like your own implementation. Okay, so uh, yeah, let's talk about uh, model deployment and um, real-time endpoints again. So uh, what happens behind the scene? So, and what like m machine learning uh, engineer uh, should do to make it uh, his like um, model Docker image like SageMaker server. So he's a, a very simple contract with SageMaker. So uh, when SageMaker uh, um, deploys this Docker container, it provides uh, like mounts model artifacts uh, unpacked into like local file system of, of, of container. And as a result of this uh, surf entry point, SageMaker expects that container uh, will handle like HTTP responses going to like specific port or specific addresses. Basically there are just two operations like ping, uh, slash ping used for health checks and slash invocations to actually post uh, input data for predictions. And as a result, uh, you will get again like secure and auto, auto scalable endpoint with support of many nice features like traffic split. You can introduce like model variants. You can implement things like A, A B testing or like canary testing here. Uh, endpoints, uh, SageMaker endpoints support like multi model and uh, model staking. So, model uh, can consist of like several. Docker containers like uh, stacked linearly. So first container can might be pre-processing the same that you use in training pipeline. And the like the next one uh, uh, model itself. So yeah, and also data capture, which is useful for model uh, monitoring. And so to implement that, uh, but different options. So like for SageMaker built-in algorithms, there's nothing to do, it's already uh, implemented for you but for your like uh, your own algorithms and models you can either build this like web very simple web api using like any open source library like for python can be flask fast api or you can use also um, open source library from aws called SageMaker inference toolkit that reduces some like boilerplate uh, uh to implement this simple api um uh, yeah an important thing here that to, uh to deploy SageMaker endpoint it's it's not necessary to to use to train this model on SageMaker. you can bring model artifacts trained like elsewhere and just provide serving code for them and use uh, like SageMaker capabilities for for deployment and also it's not if you train something using like training jobs you can just take model artifacts uh, and uh, deploy it like uh, uh, anywhere else it's not necessary okay so uh here's just like brief description of how SageMaker model monitor works but before that uh just some quick explanation when why we might need it. So usually once you deploy it model, it's not like that you can forget about it completely and start doing something else. Like a lot of bad things can, can happen. For example, uh, like training data set might become outdated, like outdated user behavior might change. COVID can happen or any other less unexpected or hidden events that might change like data distribution drastically. And that means your original data that your trained model on becomes like less relevant so and in, you can introduce like your custom instrumentation code for such cases but it will be easier if you know about like SageMaker capabilities for this kind of problem and that you can actually integrate uh, like other open source libraries for uh, doing these monitoring checks so 
uh, yeah, just what happens behind the scene when SageMaker, uh, if you want to enable like model monitoring with SageMaker, you first you enable data capture, remember that from the previous slide for model employment. And then uh, in training pipeline, you should add step that computes some like baseline statistic and infer some constraints from the training data set. So again, you can either use like pre-built containers that from uh, SageMaker, and it's based on like open source DQ library, or you can bring your own. And then you can just schedule some monitoring jobs. You can either use like SageMaker API or other like, uh, for example, and then schedule it with event breach. Uh, like, uh, yeah, that will uh, make uh, checks like capture captured data against these uh, statistics and constraints and produce reports, alerts, and other types of events uh, for your workflow. Yeah, so, and here, uh, yeah, as an alternative for SageMaker pipeline, uh we'll briefly describe what's called the kubeflow pipeline so kubeflow is like is an open source project and it's like kind of umbrella for different components so uh there is not only like pipeline and orchestrator but also other like kubernetes kubernetes native things for machine learning lifecycle like hyperparameter optimizing notebook server uh different types of jobs and things like that but uh, today we will focus on Kubeflow pipelines. So it's a like all the alternative for pipeline orchestration. It's built on top of Argo workflows projects, which is also open source. And uh, the benefit of, of this, that it's like it provides you a well documented language for workflow definitions. So and it's arguably might be more flexible in terms of possible uh, pipeline step implementations, but uh, SageMaker pipelines also evolving. So recently they introduced new types of step, uh, like uh, like Lambda step and callback step, which allows you to like, uh, gives you more flexibility in terms of uh, step types. Okay, so now let me give you an insight of how to get started with Kubeflow if you want. So, uh, Projectus has open source this army cube, a set of like Terraform models for quick and easy provisioning and management of EKS clusters on AWS. It has a quite few components that help you to bootstrap like AWS infrastructure, networking, VPC, security groups, uh, like load balancers and other like core EKS services. It also has a uh, like dedicated Kubeflow model. You can see uh, in this on the right, uh, you can so you can uh, set up the latest Kubeflow pipelines application in your AWS account quickly enough. So, uh, yeah, because like official documentation for Kubeflow might not cover, uh, whereas like some gaps uh, related uh, to AWS deployment, but you can easily solve that if you use this open source project so and um, yeah we're looking for users github issues and contributors uh, please try it out and let us know the feedback so uh, yeah so and uh, here just like simplified overview of available approaches. Uh, so for example, we on just like on the first demo, we showed you like sage maker approach. So it is uh, like pipelines orchestrate using sage maker pipelines, component execution uh, happens inside sage maker using sage maker, sage maker jobs and component code uh, works with like uh, its implementation inside. They, it works with like local container files. Yeah, and this last point is important if we start to compare with other approaches. So, but you are free uh, to change that. For example, if you want like Kubeflow pipelines, uh, 
capabilities. You can easily combine it with SageMaker. So like in the middle, you can see the hybrid approach when you use an orchestration to local pipelines, but execute uh, like workloads using uh, SageMaker jobs. And in this case, you, your like com component code, again, it works uh, with local container files. And it's like, what's more important here that it, uh, you does not introduce, you don't introduce like any uh, dependencies like either on Kubeflow or SageMaker inside this core logic for processing or like for, for model code or yeah, like for training loop. So because everything, all these data uh, connections are uh, implemented and executed by uh, pipeline orchestrator. So like there are some differences between how it is done in StageMaker and Kubeflow, but anyway, you can reuse the same uh, like component code, the same like pre-processing logic and uh, like training logic uh, and uh, model code without uh, like major changes. So it's just a matter of configuration. So yeah. Uh, okay, so so yeah, and we will demonstrate that during the next demo. Uh, and also, if you if you prefer like some hybrid approach, uh, note that there is like open source SageMaker components for Kubeflow pipelines. So yeah, it, which is actually part of an official Kubeflow and GitHub repository. Okay, now let me briefly demonstrate. Uh, uh, machine learning pipelines implemented using Kubeflow. So again, uh, I will repeat, this is the same task uh, uh, and pipelines basically the same. And it, like core logic for processing and models are shared. So yeah, here you can see like the Kubeflow pipelines dashboard. So here we can see pipeline definitions. Let's open one. Uh, yeah, you can see this uh, Argo workflow because Kubeflow pipelines just compiles it into Argo workflow. Uh, yeah, and this is a like graph visualization. As you can see, it's a little bit more uh, complicated because we use some like utility utility steps, like, like copying promise free because it, before it was done. Uh, by SageMaker automatically. Um, yeah, and that's, and also some steps just to prepare uh, like model archive because it also was done automatically like by uh, SageMaker training job. Uh, yeah, but overall it ends with the same result. We create here, we register uh, like our uh, trained model artifacts as a SageMaker model. And if you, if you open, for example, one of these components, let's see like parsing, uh, we, we use actually the same Docker image that we used for, uh, for uh, SageMaker pipelines processing step. So just matter of configuration. So like when you, uh, configure it for SageMaker pipelines. You map data from S3 and backwards and provide some arguments. And for uh, Kubeflow pipelines, you do it a little bit differently. But internal logic remains the same. You don't have to change code. Um, yeah, let's see some execution. Yeah, and here. Uh, yeah, it basically it supports uh, uh, like again some some lineage of artifacts metrics. So if we open, for example, yeah, you can see all of these things here. Yeah, and let me just quickly maybe show you structure for project just. Um, not many cards. So here you can see uh, uh, 
just some components of that. You can see like processing container which uh, supports like uh, quite a few commands used as steps. Uh, and some like training uh, containers. And we, so we don't have different versions of like Kubeflow or SageMaker. And we just, if we want to, and here you can see just how we define, combine them either for uh, like SageMaker pipeline here. Yeah, we don't have time to look into actual code and for, for Kubeflow. So, yeah, so once you uh, implement your like pipeline components, you can use them uh, in any of these uh, pipeline orchestrators. Oh, okay, so let me return to the presentation. Okay, so these were like key takeaways from today's session. So modern machine learning infrastructure accelerate times to value for ML initiatives and increase trust from the business. Uh, eliminates handoffs between data scientists, uh, machine learning engineers in IT, minimize the growing technical debt in machine learning projects. And as we uh, try to demonstrate, like Amazon SageMaker is not monolithic and does not make you dependent on it. You can quickly start using like built-in algorithms and templates and then uh, uh, replace pieces that cause bottlenecks. And for example, you can use SageMaker just like an infrastructure. And you can also free to use resulting machine learning artifacts uh, anywhere. So, and you can complement like fully managed AWS services with open source projects for pipeline orchestration, model building, data preparation, and data quality assurance. Uh, so, I guess this is it from my side. Now I will pass uh, uh, to Yaroslav. Yeah, thanks, Renat. I really hope our audience finds that content useful. Thank you. I know we are on top of the hour, so I'll be really quick. Here is the next step for you to get started. Next slide, please. Yeah, so if you are part of an organization that currently has an ongoing machine learning initiatives, Prevectus and AWS have jointly developed a machine learning infrastructure acceleration program for you. It is designed to help businesses build a robust machine learning infrastructure to accelerate AI adoption enterprise-wide. In a nutshell, this program is a combination of pre-built quick starts, reference architectures, in-person workshop, and finding opportunities. Prevectus and AWS will work with your leadership team to align your company towards a North Star machine learning architecture processes and culture, so you can tap into benefits we have highlighted during this session faster and with less upfront investment. The offering is available to a limited number of customers and is a fully funded engagement. Please use the link in the GoToWebinar chat window to apply for the program. I'm sending it to you right now. Yeah. You will also receive it in the follow-up email with the webinar recording, so you will not miss it. We are recruiting only 10 customers to qualify for the program. Should you have any questions, you are very welcome to join our Slack workspace so our team can help you out. You can also find that link in the GoToWebinar chat window. Thank you. With that, I'm passing over back to Renat for a Q&A session. Okay, thank, thank you, Rasna. So let's see what questions do we have at the moment. Uh, I actually don't see any questions here. Maybe I'm doing something wrong in the go to webinar. All right, let's wrap up then.